Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Facebook and LinkedIn Live. Thank you for being here with us or watching this later today. Today, we have a very exciting live planned because we'll be actually announcing the five first challenges of the Formathon 2020. So today, we'll be running through what the Formathon is, uh, speaking about what the program looks like, and uh, obviously diving into the five challenges at the end of this webcast. So if you're just joining in, uh, in about 10 minutes or so, we'll be doing the grand reveal of these challenges. But first, I'd love to go around the table and just share with you um, everybody that's here today. So Lael, we'll kick off with yourself. Perfect. Thank you, Nick. So my name is Lael Hadi. As you can see, I'm the executive director for FinTech Cadence. I'm also a professor at Concordia University. Uh, I've been with FinTech Cadence for the last five years, uh, and this is going to be um, our third or fourth formathon that we'll be working on. So I'm very excited to dive in a bit deeper and see how we can work on building it and being relevant in today's context. Thank you. Alejandro? Hi, I am Alejandro Marin. I am an innovation facilitator who has been heavily inspired by artificial intelligence. And I run my own startup, which is, and that's exactly what we do. We do innovation facilitation inspired by artificial intelligence. Awesome. Thanks, Alejandro. And Neil? I'm Neil. I'm a current team member of FinTech Cadence and a past participant of Formathon. So I'm here to chime in the experience. Awesome. Thank you. And excited to hear more about your, your experience uh, just a bit later. Um, and lastly, myself, I'm Nicholas Belvo, head of marketing at uh, FinTech. Cadence, and uh, we'll, we'll kick it off right away um, with a, a, a presentation of what the Formathon is all about. So Neil and I will go backstage, and Lael and Alejandro, I'll let you take it away. Perfect. Thank you. thank you very much, Nick. So to everyone listening, thank you and welcome. Um, like I said earlier, we're very excited to have you guys here. We're also very excited to launch the Formathon officially. We think that in today's context and what's happening, the Formathon is going to be quite relevant and hopefully add a lot of value, not only to the financial sector, but also to the to Canadians at large. And I'm happy to be talking to Alejandro as a former animator of the Formathon last year as well, um, to be able to give you the different perspectives and show you and launch to you what the Formathon is going to look like for this year. So most importantly, and the first matter at hand is, well, what is the Formathon? The Formathon is an open innovation competition that looks at addressing challenges or opportunities in the financial sector. It's addressing the fintech ecosystem and really looks at supporting all the stakeholders that are within the ecosystem to provide them with solutions. Now, we've been doing this for a few years, uh, and this year is no different, uh, except for a few tweaks, which I'll elaborate on in a little bit. But what we're trying to do with the, with the Formathon as well is give you the opportunity to work in, with, in teams with highly skilled individuals to be able to solve some of these challenges. Um, and I'm happy as well for Alejandro to be here as a former animator, as I was saying, who is going to also be able to jump in and see what's the value that he's gotten in the past. Now, why is the Formathon important? Uh, I think we're all very much aware of what's happening in today's environment with COVID-19. We understand that it's not only challenging for companies and businesses, but it's challenging for Canadians at large. And this is really where fintech shines. Fintech can be an industry and sector that really helps solve some of the challenges that we're seeing, whether it's through the issues of student loans, whether it's through protecting people's and, and consumers' savings, whether it's just trying to figure out how small businesses can thrive and, and help support in this economy. And that's what the Formathon's role really does. And how does it do that? By addressing challenges, bringing together highly talented individuals, uh, to come in and try and solve these challenges or look for opportunities that might elevate um, the sector and Canada at large. So Alejandro, from your side, why do you think the Formathon is important? Well, I think the, the Formathon is important. It's an ecosystem we need to come together. And the Formathon is a perfect opportunity for everybody to learn from everybody. And that is in both sense. Corporations can learn from um, the youth inside the ecosystem, entrepreneurs, employees, researchers, and vice versa. Um, people looking to work inside the, the industry, they have the perfect opportunity to do so, to network, to learn from within. And people looking to uh, launch a startup, uh, you know, I can, I can speak by example, right? I did the FinTech Cadence certificate 
and it was an amazing opportunity to learn, you know, to learn the industry. And the formaton is just the, you know, one of those steps that people have the opportunity to take. Yeah, absolutely. And then we look at it for those of you who are who are interested in trying to solve some of the challenges that we as Canada are facing uh, in today's in today's environment is, well, why should you join? Well, you should join if you're interested in developing your skill sets. This is an excellent learning opportunity. We'll be including curriculum that touches on design thinking principles. We'll be giving you real term, real life experiences and overall a very strong experiential learning. You should also join if you're looking to get access to the industry. And part of the Formathon or the value of the Formathon is that we connect you directly with industry experts. We help you connect with them to validate ideas, to understand their perspective, and to be able to implement the solutions right away so that it's real solutions that are being implemented. The other thing is networking. You will be working with a team, which I'll explain how it's going to work in a few minutes, uh, but you'll be working with a team. And so in, in enlarging your network, being able to expand on that and being able to connect with like-minded individuals who are looking to solve and add value to the ecosystem right now is a great element of it. Uh, the last thing is to play a strong role in the challenges that we're facing in today. A lot of us are asking ourselves, what can we do to support, whether it's Canadians, consumers, businesses, what can we do to help? And there's lots of opportunities that are available. This is one of them as well. If you wanna see how your background, your skill sets, if you wanna learn while supporting, then this is a phenomenal opportunity for you to come together and work on solutions that are going to be implemented right away uh, within the context that we're seeing. Alejandro, from your side? Yes. Uh, well, benefits, I think, um, would be, uh, I think you mentioned one uh, crucial benefit for people looking to build a startup or to explore the industry, and that is validation. I mean, it's not only the process of uh, forcing yourself to crystallize your idea, to expose it to different people within the event. It's also the opportunity to get direct feedback from experts in the industry. And also, uh, as you go through the program, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get specific techniques, uh, tools, and you're gonna get coach coaching and facilitation to actually actually go and test your idea during this short period which is uh, you know it's roughly three weeks so that's an amazing opportunity for anyone with the project and similarly i think it's not that different if you're looking to work inside the industry you get all of this exposure all the opportunity to learn and test your assumptions and adjust and network yeah absolutely so to sum up why you should participate in the formathon really what alejandro and i are saying is improve your skills, build on the skills that you may have or not have, be able to validate directly with industry experts, um, be able to network and build on teams and add value to the ecosystem through the collaborative approach that Alejandro and I have mentioned. So thank you for that, Alejandro. Um, a few things for you guys to understand about the Formathon in terms of the logistics. So as we mentioned, the Formathon is a three week initial program with the ability to continue on for nine weeks to further develop your program. And um, it's all done online. So it doesn't matter if you are in Montreal or if you're in Vancouver, everything is available to you online. We will be using various platforms, most notably Zoom, to be able to connect you and to be able to deliver both the content that you'll be learning as well as connect you with industry experts. The curriculum is, as mentioned earlier, focused on design thinking principles. And like Alejandro was saying, is getting you to directly validate right away your ideas and be able to implement them right away. So the sessions will be run on Saturdays, they're all day. You'll be coming in and learning from, from uh, different facilitators, Alejandro, myself included. Industry experts will be coming in to deliver sessions. There'll also be sessions running on Wednesday nights and those sessions are what we call industry nights. And again, the complete ability for you to network with industry experts from financial institutions, insurance firms, various startups and scale-ups, as well as community organizations that are playing a role within the FinTech ecosystem. The next element is the, the teams. So we'll be working on connecting you with the right talent and the right skill sets uh, of teams through the different platforms that we have. It includes personality assessments to make sure you have the right team. It includes supporting and building team charters so that you understand the commitment of how and what you're going to be building. Now, one key element I should also mention for the Formathon is that it is split into two different tracks. The first track is a startup. So if you're looking to solve challenges to then further build on and create your own business, then this is a great track for you. You'll be able to meet with like-minded individuals, form a holistic team with the various skill sets, 
and then go on to hopefully build your startup and be a part of the startup ecosystem here. The other track that we have is the research track. Now that's where you can really deep dive further into different challenges that we're going to be announcing in a few minutes and build on the research and provide a very strong foundation for individuals who, or companies who are then going to take that information and be able to implement and build solutions off of it. So very simply, a startup track where you'll build your business and a research track where you'll develop research that will be able to support the ecosystem at large. And lastly, this whole uh, experience that we were talking about, the three-week formathon part of it, will be culminating in a demo day. Now, this demo day will be live and public so that the whole ecosystem can come in and support. And we have phenomenal prizes that will be allocated there, including a $5,000 prize. So if you are interested, if you're looking to get into the fintech ecosystem and you're not really sure how to do it, this is the right way to do it. It's an easy way. You're learning all the skill sets that you need. If you've been in the ecosystem for a while and you've always had an idea that you really want to implement based on some of the challenges that we're going to announce, then this is a great opportunity for you to be in there. If you're looking to build your startup and looking for different talents and different team members, then this is also a phenomenal experience. And if you want to understand the industry by connecting directly to those who are working in it, then furthermore, the Formathon is a brilliant place for you to be able to do that. So I'm going to thank you for listening to us, and I'm going to bring uh, Nick and Neil back into the call so that we're able to announce the challenges. Yeah, thanks so much, Lael. And thank you, Alejandro, for speaking about what the, the Formathon is all about. But just before we get into the challenges, why, why we brought Neil is because he, you, well, so now Neil is, is in charge of uh, business development and partnerships at FinTech Cadence. But before uh, joining FC, you you participate in the Formathon. So I'd love to hear about your experience um, as a, a past participant of uh, the Formathon. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for, for having me presented because um, I really do want to give people an idea of what they're getting into. It's an amazing experience. Uh, so currently, like Nick mentioned, I'm, I'm working with FinTech Cadence. And the reason I'm working here today is because I enjoyed it so much that I had to continue on. So uh, I, I did it back in 2018. And at the time, I was uh, you know, a student and I was, I was really looking at, so what would, what would my career path be? And I saw an announcement for Formathon. So, okay, I've always been interested in entrepreneurship. Let's take a, take a shot at it. And so it was an intense three weeks where I found really cool team members uh, to work on a challenge. And I think what was really interesting for me is that the challenges were there. They were available for us to, to look at and understand beforehand. So, which means that I could choose the sort of path I wanted to take. Um, what, did you, you know, what, what was the challenge you ended up working on? Yeah, so I, I specifically was on a HR challenge presented by BNP Paribas. And uh, we went through the process of addressing the question of how might we uh, improve the recruiting process for both candidates and hiring managers. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my background's in recruiting, so this fit perfectly and mm -hmm. um, took it away from there. It was, um, you know, I think what's cool about that is we, we had a direct link with the bank and uh, they were there as mandators they would come in every week, talk to us, give us some uh, some feedback on what we were working on. And like was mentioned, like we went through a design thinking process, so it, which is quite new and I, and I fell in love with um, and just being able to, you know, empathize with users, do a lot of research, uh, create rapid prototypes, demonstrate them and uh, and, and have real time feedback with, with those who would be using the product in the future. Sure. So did did cool you know that. your team before coming into the Formathon or like it was just a whole new experience? You came in and built your team from the ground up. Yeah, a whole new experience, uh, which is why I wanted to do it, <laughs> you know, because it, it, it really allowed for me that platform, that framework to create a team. You know, it's very hard to find co-founders. So uh, that yeah. was, it was directly linked to it. Awesome. Awesome. And then how did you find the process itself? I, I know uh, you, you you wrote a little blog post about it uh, last week. So if you guys want to read more detail about that, I invite you to check it out. But uh, for, from a firsthand experience, um, building a, a startup can be quite challenging. Was it your like entrepreneurial experience, so to say? Uh, it was my. I've, I've had a small business before, and I, I and I continued to do you know some uh, some freelancing. But it was my first real startup. And um, I think that's what's important to note is like anyone can really get into it, whether you have previous experience or not. You know, it's my first real startup experience. And, and that's a, it's a good way to start is having that, um, that dedicated challenge. Uh, otherwise, you know, I wasn't sure what I would do for my startup. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's really the beauty of the formathon because we find that a lot of times um, first-time entrepreneurs work on the solution rather than focusing on the problem. And it's the the formathon essentially solves that uh, chicken and egg problem and helps mm-hmm. first-time founders really identify the the core problem uh, such that you you save a lot of time essentially because you're working on something that's relevant and that will provide value. Yeah, you do, and 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 not only that, but you get to. I mean, we we won. We were we were really quite happy to win that challenge, and uh, which meant that we continued on with BNB Paribas for several months afterwards, uh, and presented their senior managers, uh, the head of HR in Canada, um, and you know, and, and a lot of the uh, the staff there. So it was really unique uh, to be able to interact with senior level uh, managers, you know, right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Um, well, so congrats. I'm honored to be with a, a formathon winner uh, <laughs> here on the live media day. And now uh, you made it. So thanks for, for sharing that, Neil. Um, so without further ado, is, and I think this is a perfect segue to start introducing this year's challenges. So Lyle and Alejandro will be coming back on to the stream. Um, and let's, uh, let's get right into it. And I, I'd love to ha- have it as a discussion to speak about these challenges with you all, because I think there's some really exciting ones this year, especially given... Uh, the situation going on with uh, coronavirus. So the first challenge of Formathon 2020 is, how can we support Canadians in rebuilding their savings? So first challenge of Formathon 2020, how can we help Canadians in rebuilding their savings? Laya, why um, why did we choose this challenge uh, for this year's Formathon? Yeah, thank you, Nick. I mean, I will say that all of the challenges have really been selected before I get into the specific one. All of the challenges have really been selected from a lot of the research that we've done internally. So speaking to various um, players within the ecosystem, whether they were startups, financial institutions, or consumers in, in at large. And we know that with what's happening, it's very difficult to see, um, well, one, any savings that we might have had or savings that we thought we were going to be able to implement in the future. And this is going to have a long-term impact and potentially detrimental impact. So what we were looking at and what I was saying earlier is fintech is trying to really save and support a lot of these um, elements is well how can we help canadians with their savings and how can we give them the right tools or how can we give them the right features within their financial institution services that will help them uh, recover their savings or start building their savings in the future yeah absolutely and this one's part of the startup track so for those who do want to tackle this massive issue uh, when you look at the stats it, it's quite staggering and you see all the government programs coming out to try to help, but this is, we're just at the front end of the problem. No one really knows how how deep we shall go. Um, but being in the startup track, this will offer teams the possibility to actually build a startup around this. Um, the difference with the research track is you're just trying to more analyze it, present your findings. Here you'll, you'll be asked to, within the three-week span, form a team and then build a, a solution um, to make it happen with the help of all the experts in the curriculum of the Formathon itself. So the second challenge we'll dive into right away is how can we increase security in financial applications? So cybersecurity, obviously uh, a huge trend of 2020. Even before all this happened, um, we knew cybersecurity uh, was becoming a more important theme. Um, so why, why should teams maybe choose this challenge? Well, well, you hit the nail right on the head, Nick, right? So um, the first thing is cybersecurity has always in the last, in the near past, has always been an issue, right? But now we know one of the biggest things that a lot of the financial institutions or a lot of the solutions, even from the government side that they're trying to do is that digitization and automation of their processes. With that comes the challenge of everybody migrating online. I mean, we've seen it with different platforms already. We've seen it with, unfortunately, people targeting consumers Um, And so now is really the time to say, we don't have the choice to go online. We don't have the choice to digitize anymore. We need to do that. But with that, the conversation should be, and in doing so, how can we protect all of our users in whichever platform or services that we're offering? So it's not an element of fear that they have to go into it. Cybersecurity is really trying to protect people from life-changing impacts that can happen to them. And so now we're saying, let's see how we can support all of the people who are coming up with solutions by protecting them through different solutions in the cybersecurity world. So Alejandro, for, so, for me, Alejandro. if um, meeting somebody who's not uh, savvy, I'm not a tech expert, um, and for other people who would be interested in participating and who find this challenge really 
interesting. The beauty of the Formathon, in a way, is that you don't need to necessarily be a cybersecurity expert to participate, right? It's open to all. Sure. So what would you tell people who have almost no foundation in cybersecurity, but would want to contribute in some way to this challenge? Well, it's uh, oh, one of the biggest loopholes in security systems is human behavior. So it, th there is a tremendous opportunity for um, people outside technical domains to contribute to security by helping um, improve, you know, the the design and the security cultures. Right? It's uh, it's funny, but the, the same way companies are having trouble adopting having their employees adopting tools, they're having similar problems having employees adopting security policies. So you know the, the the human problem remains at the center of one of these major challenges, and I think uh, someone who is not a technical person in security can actually add a really interesting spin on a uh, cybersecurity startup or project. Yeah, oftentimes it's people with different perspectives come that come together where you get the most creative solutions and more of a out of the yes. box approach to it. Neil, for in past formathons, like you mentioned, you had a recruiting background and then you did an HR challenge, which made a lot of sense. Um, for you, did you see other teams that weren't necessarily experts in their fields participate in formathon? Yeah, I, I would say that most had a technical capability or um, business capability in terms of their knowledge, but they weren't necessarily experts in that field. And I think that's quite important is that what you bring into it is agility uh, and the ability to adapt and, and, and that fresh mindset, like Alejandro was mentioning, is super important because in design thinking, you have to have a broad perspective from the users and not just from those who are designing it, but from those who will be using it. So um, I think that was super key because it's a fresh perspective uh, that you bring to the problem. Mm, absolutely. Right, cool. Let's dive into the third challenge. So those two were for the startup track. Now we're moving this third one to the research track. How will uptake of open banking be impacted by COVID-19? So open banking is probably the biggest theme of 2020. We had a, a very popular fintech drinks about it back in February when we were able to get together in person. Um, but open banking is still extremely relevant. Lyle, what are your thoughts on this challenge? Right, well, we go back to well, what really is open banking. For a lot of Canadian consumers, they might not be very familiar with it, but from the financial sector, that really is talking about giving data and empowering users and consumers with their own personal data. So that being said, and again, knowing that a lot of the solutions and a lot of the services that are happening are either migrating online or consumers are starting to become a bit more aware of what's happening from the financial side of their own behavior or even financial institutions. Uh, and so now the question is really, um, what is gonna happen with that process? Two months ago, we were talking about how long is it gonna take to be implemented in Canada? Where is it working globally? How are we gonna educate Canadian consumers on the integration of open banking policies or processes? And now the question really is, how is that, gonna, how is that what's happening with COVID-19 gonna impact these conversations? Is it gonna speed it up? Is it gonna slow it down? Are we going to really put an emphasis on it from the government's perspective or from financial institutions or regulations? So there's a lot of really interesting content that needs to be researched and there's a lot of different stakeholders that are working on it. So this is one of the challenges that is quite exciting for me because as we've said before, two months ago, we had the conversation and FinTech drinks. We've been personally talking about it for the last year or so. And so now it's really trying to understand how is the context of today going to impact one of the largest conversations that we've been having within the FinTech ecosystem. Absolutely. And I think it's a great introductory challenge for, for those who might not want the commitment or involvement of launching a full fully fledged startup. Because um, you, you have to understand the Formathon is three weeks, but the, the adventure, so to speak, is much longer than that. Um, and some people might want to just dip their toes in a way and discover what fintech is all about. And I think this challenge is, is one of the, the best ones because the general Canadian population aren't very familiar with the, the term open banking, whereas it's an extremely important term in the financial world. Um, and without the commitment of building a startup, you could learn a lot about what's happening in the space and uh, really develop knowledge and even share um, what your, your findings throughout this competition. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's one that's going to be really popular. At least I hope so. The, the fourth challenge 
once again in the research track, how can we support government and startup entities with managing, issuing, and tracking loans? Obviously, with the situation, um, loans are more important than ever. Um, you know, from government, they're trying to uh, speed up the process because the the amount that I believe it was the BDC or rather um, the employment support received over a million um, loan requests, and that you know that volume is is unprecedented. Um, so being able to 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 treat them. Uh, and issuing them is is uh, a brand new challenge. So I think this one is the most, we, we couldn't have seen this one coming, so to speak, if the formathon was uh, a couple of months ago. Um, love to hear your, your thoughts on whoever wants to, to share on, on this challenge. Yeah, sure, I'll jump in because I, I, earlier when we first started talking about the formathon and the, the role, the first thing I think that comes to our mind is how can we really add value and in a, in a solution format of what's happening. So we look at the government really trying to come up with solutions and they've done a phenomenal job. Right? They're trying to expand and allocate resources, spend as much financial support as they can across the board in different, in, in different elements of the Canadian um, economy. And so now we see that the government's really trying to support the Canadian, uh, Canadian economy, as I was saying, but there is challenges that comes with that. And the challenges being, um, that the different uh, that it's taxing on the services and the way the services are being offered, and so the question becomes: How can we, in the fintech ecosystem, who understand the way the financial the sector works and we understand the loan process, how can we support through the technologies that we're also familiar with to help support the government in implementing these loans? And we mentioned, as you mentioned in the question, it talks about student loans as well. It talks about various types of loans, um, and so this one really hits personally to me because we are saying let's all play a role in supporting Canada in getting back to where we want to get back to. And the best way to do that is to support those who are trying to support us. And, and so yeah. this one should be one that hopefully ignites a fire in everybody who hears it. Well, I think Alejandro's son was really interested because he just yes. walked on over and he wanted to sign <laughs> yeah. up to the Formathon yeah. right away. I think he's already signed yeah. up. It's a, yeah. <laughs> the youngest formathon participant to date. It's good. We're getting yeah. we're getting people even younger interested in fintech. Yes, yes, exactly. He's my stress test actually, and uh, <laughs> you know he's uh, he's uh, testing my innovation facilitation skills. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I wanted to add to this challenge something that that I find uh, fascinating is that fintech offers so much insights into these hidden challenges, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy for uh, for people to get excited about cons consumer facing uh, challenges and you know things that you know, look shine and cool. Uh, but this particular challenge, it's one of those where you get to see inside the you know the inner workings of society, and you get to help um, at a specific point where there is a strong pain. And you know, a good solution can actually relieve um, relieve a lot of pain. So, just thought it's one of the for me interesting things that happen in, in fintech, and I wanted to point that out to to people. Yeah, definitely. A, a lot of the consumer facing ones are much more relatable, especially for those outside of the industry, because you have a financial life and you're able to relate to it much better than the intricate workings of uh, bank to bank exchanges or uh, you know government subsidies. The, the last challenge, the fifth challenge that we're announcing today also has to do with um, in, in the lending space. Uh, and I think it's going to hit home to, to a lot of our audience. How can we prepare Canadians to catch up and manage their student loans? So um, I'm still in, in, in the lending space. Uh, Lyle, you as a professor, I'd love to hear uh, why this challenge was uh, selected. Yeah, I'm happy to start uh, from the perspective of a professor, and then I would love to also hear Neil's perspective as a student right now. So uh, I think for me, what I've seen and what pulls on my heartstring is that university students really do care about getting a strong education, not only to help build their future, but also to kind of uh, support them in the areas that they're passionate about. It's challenging normally to be a student. There is, as we mentioned, the student loans. There's a lot of pressure in their assignments and making sure that they can get a job afterwards in supporting their families sometimes in coming into a new country and, and, and learning in a different environment. So being a student in general is very difficult. And I think as professors, one of the things that we're told 
And that we really try and push is how can we support students through this process, not only in the content that we give them, but in also all of the different elements of it. Now, add to that the COVID-19 challenge where they're unsure of their economy. They have a lot of pressures in completing their assignments and submitting and making sure that they graduate on time for those who are graduating or can make sure that their graduation date is not impacted. On top of all of that stress, there is the element of student loans. So what we're trying to see here really is how can we support what I'll call a almost vulnerable population at this time to help them get back on their feet, but also not feel so pressured right now that they cannot complete one of the biggest life milestones that they will have in their life. And again, really that's the role that FinTech can play is supporting different elements of, the, of, the, of our country, of our community and say, what can we do to support them and help them in something that they're finding a challenge with? Understanding your student loans is challenging sometimes. Understanding your student loans and how you're going to be able to pay it when you're not sure what the job market looks like, I can only imagine what that stress feels like. So from a professor's perspective and from being in the fintech ecosystem, this is one that I think we should really be trying to support because not to sound too corny here, but the university students are really the ones who are going to be adding and building the future of the Canadian economy. We don't want to disappoint them. We don't want to fail them at this moment. So maybe, Neil, from your perspective, you can... Uh, you can see from as a student what it's uh, what it's really like. Yeah, I mean, it really hits home for myself and my friends as well as family who have gone through school. And we have accumulated quite a bit of debt. And as Canadians, I think we have that in general. But students, like you said, are going into an uncertain environment. And we don't know how long this will take to really resolve itself before there is a normal hiring period again. Um, so there are quite a few measures at the federal level to help with this. But you know, that's temporary reprieve. And we still have that debt on our books. Um, you know, I consider myself lucky uh, to be able to pay off, you know, most of it at this time, but some don't have that opportunity. So I think it's especially relevant now. Um, and it becomes even more confusing, like never mind looking for jobs and graduating and having that stress, but also like your, your banking system, the way it works now with loans is, is quite complex. I mean, depending on your institution, some of them, you, they allow you to do you know, the payments directly online, some you have to call in, some, and then you don't necessarily understand. I think just understanding how fast you pay it off effectively changes how much interest you have to pay in the long run too. And just that understanding is, is a lot of stress. So I think this would be a great challenge for those who, who want to be able to explore that and help others, uh, you know, understand that. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, fit, FinTech for, it, it seems like a very abstract term. People don't necessarily know what it's all about, but when you relate it to the five challenges we, we mentioned today, it becomes much more concrete and then you really see the benefit of integrating technology into the financial system itself. Um, it's it, it, There's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of innovation that's possible in this space to make it more accessible, inclusive, diverse, and helpful to the general population. So uh, well, for everybody listening, I hope you're excited about these five challenges, or at least one of them, and that you'll uh, select it, form a team, and participate in this year's Formathon. As a reminder, it kicks off in just about a month on May 28th. It's a three-week program, and uh, we're super excited to bring it online for the first time, and this across Canada. So no matter where you're at in this country, you're able to participate and form a team somebody from BC to Nova Scotia, um, you're able to participate. So we hope to see you there. And actually, today we're going to announce a special promo code. So you're able to save 30% um, if you sign up before May 1st. We'll share the link if you're interested in participating. Um, you don't need to select your challenge yet. We simply ask which track you're interested in. If you're more interested in the research track or the startup track itself, um, once again, the startup track is if you want to build a startup, and the research track is if you want um, to just research a, a challenge in depth. And uh, we'll be sharing that link afterwards. But I would like to thank uh, everybody for for tuning in, and especially our our guest Lyle. Thank you so much for coming on and and sharing um, your perspective, Neil and Alejandro as well. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, excited to to thank speak you. about the Formathon. We'll be posting these challenges so you could read up about them and uh, stay tuned for, for more announcements in the next month. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Take you. care. Have a great day.